Hello, YouTube. Welcome to God Nod. I am Casey, and this, my bed is right above me. Down here, I have a little prayer, little prayer space, I like to call it. Today, I'm sharing a God Nod on how the Lord sparked within me this huge desire for joy and to be in His presence. First, in my prayer life, I, for some reason, about a week or so ago, I've been praying for God to give me the grace to see Christ in other people. Not just to see Christ in other people, but to see them as Christ. So that the way I treat them and the way I love them is so much better than before. If I am able to love them as if I love Christ, holy cow. Like, how much more different, how much better would I love people? So this is what I've been praying with, right? Next, I found this YouTuber on accident. Her name is Emma. And all of her videos, you can just see the outstanding enthusiastic joy just like beaming off of her in every single video and just the personality and who she is you can just see the joy just woof, like just, just coming out of her and you know no matter like what her content is like seeing that joy in her I was just like wow like that joy is attractive that joy just soaks people in that joy is what people want and I was like man if I could only let Christ be that joy within me how much more would I be able to love people? How much more would I be, be able to see others as Christ if I can let Christ be that joy for me? And I will go ahead and if you click this little link up here, you can see one of her videos just to see what I'm talking about of this joy coming out. So after watching this video, this thought of just being joyful just stuck with me. And then I went to adoration and I just took it to the Lord and I said, Lord, and even like wrote in my prayer journal, I love to write, right? And so I'm just writing away to the Lord. And I just wrote to the Lord how much I desire to have that joy. How much I desire to see everything as a gift. No matter what it is, whether it's my coffee in the morning, which is great, or whether it's a pain or suffering or bad news or a boring class or a practice I don't want to go to or whatever it might be, help me to see it as a gift from God. Because everything I have and receive, it's a gift from God. And I and I want the eyes to be able to see it that way rather than just complaining or having a bad day or, you know, not being joyful, right? And so I just took this to the Lord and I was just writing away to God. Lord, help me to be joyful. Help me to see every little thing as a gift. And then the Lord is just so good. Do you guys remember way back a while ago when the Lord brought me this book about virtue? I'll go ahead and link it up here to see how the Lord brought me this book and how I need to do a virtue each month, right? Well, it's November and I haven't read my chapter yet. And I was like, oh man, like I need to see what virtue it is for November. And guess what it is, guys? November, affability and gratitude. It says affability, the grace of being pleasant and at ease and talking with others and gratitude, the virtue of being thankful. Yep, that's the theme of November, the exact Thing that the Lord has been putting on my heart to be joyful to be grateful for every little thing that's what the theme is for this month and everything within this chapter is about seeing and receiving everything as a gift from God and remember that first thing that I prayed for to be able to see Christ and others when I meet them right literally in here it talks about um, like this this virtue book is about st. Lucy and how she used these virtues in her life right and this says in fact, she was so grateful to God that she loved everyone, as though each were Jesus himself. Yeah. And then later on in the chapter, it says it again. It says, She graciously welcomed and generously served every person she met because everyone was Christ to her. And everyone was the channel through which Christ met and welcomed Lucy. Exactly the prayer that the Lord has put in my heart. All in the month that the Lord had provided for me. Are you seeing like how the Lord works now, right? He like can like place things in your heart and then he can just bring things to you to stir up what he's putting into your heart. Like this is how the Lord works, right? But this is the this isn't the only thing he's been using. He's got some more that he's using. That next day I did my Christian morning prayer, which is a form of devotion and prayer in a Catholic church called Liturgy of the Hours. It's a community kind of prayer, but I've been praying it every morning and it's all in this book, right? And it's all these different psalms and stuff for each day. And what stuck out to me from this morning 
is from Psalm 51, and it's, A pure heart create for me, O God, put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Right there, right? Okay. And I was like, man, I just need to carry that throughout my day. And so I wrote it on a little, you know, note card and just kind of like kept it close to my heart and just kind of kept praying it throughout my day. And then I was like, you know what? Let me like look up in my Bible and see if there's like a different translation. And so I did. And in my Bible's translation and the New American Bible translation, it says basically the same thing, but I want to point out something because I think this is where the Lord has been working. And he's, it says, a clean heart create for me, O God, renew me. Renew within me a steadfast spirit. Do not drive me from before your face, nor take from me your Holy Spirit. The, point, the thing I want to emphasize is it says in the Christian prayer in that, in that one, it said, do not cast me away from your presence. But then my, my Bible, it translated into, do not drive me from your face. Your face, to me, just kind of made it more personal because here I, I am about praying, about seeing the face of Jesus and others. And here I just took it to that level of, okay, don't drive me away from your presence, but don't drive me away from your face. Don't drive me away from your face and others. Help me to see your face and others. And then yesterday on All Saints Day, the mass readings had everything to do with this. And the second reading, it was from 1 John 3, 1 through 3. And at the very end, it talks about, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has put this hope based on him makes himself pure, for he is pure. Pure. No. Lord, create within me a clean heart, a pure heart. Right back to that verse that stuck out to me from my morning prayer that day. And then that psalm for that mass was from Psalm 24. And our response to that psalm was, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. And I was like, yes, that is me. I long to see your face. I long to see your face in others. I long to be that joy for people. Like, yes, this is the psalm. Like, Lord, I am the person who longs to see your face. And in that psalm, it talked about having a clean heart. Just like throwing everything together in there, right? And the Lord's not done yet. In the gospel reading from Matthew 5, 1 through 12, one of, it was like the Beatitudes, right? Like, blessed are the... Da, 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 right well one of them was blessed are the clean of heart for they shall see god from all of this from all of the lord from you know the bible to my christian prayer to journaling to this book through just praying praying by myself and the lord just putting things in my heart it all has to do with creating a clean heart being before the lord seeing christ and others and being able to do that fills me with that joy to love them, right? And so that has been my prayer and that is what the Lord has been calling me to do lately. Okay, so how can I do that? Well, pray, right? I need to continue to be spending lots of time in prayer and in scripture and asking the Lord to create within me a clean heart and just be with me and to, and to constantly try to envision Jesus' face on everyone I meet, everyone I see, whether it's someone that I get annoyed with really easily or someone I just absolutely love, seeing everyone as Christ and treating them as Christ. And if I do that, I will be able to love them so well that through loving them, I will receive the joy of Christ. And so that is my goal. And I invite you to join with me to choose joy this day, to choose to be that joy for others, especially with winter coming, like people's moods are about to drop low. Like we need to keep the spirits high. We are called, God is choosing you and me to bring that joy to people because this world needs it. And just a little tidbit advice on how to be joyful throughout your day. First, pray for God to remind you of your mission on earth, your purpose on earth. Our purpose brings souls to Christ. That's our mission. We're not here just for nothing. Just knowing that and bringing that within my mind, my heart, my soul, reminds me, hey, every little moment is for Christ. Every little moment is to bring another person to Christ. First, that can bring you joy. And one other little thing that you can do is just to have fun and dance. Put some upbeat Christian music on to get you in a good mood in the morning. Whatever you need to do.
those of you who like that song, go ahead and check it out. It's my friend Dana. She's absolutely amazing. Go ahead and check her music out. Especially check out this song. This is her newest song and it's called Surrender Song by Dana Catherine. And it is just amazing. It's so upbeat and it has a great message. It's all about just surrendering your life to the Lord. Yeah, go check it out. And just sing and dance to the Lord because He's your joy. Amen. Hallelujah.